This is a 1930s radio, and this is a high-powered gaming PC. Here's how I built it. This project started with my mum of all people. She's in love with this app called FreeCycle, where people give away their old stuff. And where she found this old beauty, and immediately thought of me. How kind. The exact model in question seems to be an old Murphy radio, originating from around the 1930s. I'm not quite sure in that, but let me know in the comments if you're wrong. And it's not working. I plugged it in, and despite the light coming on, it just would not produce any sound. So I didn't see a problem in tearing it down and putting a PC inside. After removing the three flathead screws holding in the back, we could see the inside of the radio. This radio was produced in a time before transistors, so as you can see there are a bunch of large glass tubes called valves. This was what was used for logic before transistors. The first thing to come out is what I can only assume to be the power transformer. It was where the motherboard was going to be and I don't really have a use for it so I just chucked it in the bin after cutting the cables. Hiding behind the transformer were the pins holding in the logo on the front of the radio. I'm going to take this out and give this a good clean so it can sparkle like new in the finished build. To test the placement of the motherboard, I used this one that was lying around in my room. It seems like it will be fit great with just a little bit of modification needing done to the side. Moving on and tear down the radio, it was time to take out the brains. This had everything from the speaker amplifier, to the antennas, to the dials to adjust volume and tuning, as well as all the logic from the valves that we spoke about earlier. And this was kind of a pain to remove, as it was stuck to the front, and the knobs in the front had a tiny little screw hole to get out. But, after a little bit of struggling, I managed to get it out and cut all the wires loose. Again, as it was broken, I just threw it in the trash. I didn't really know what to do with it. And all you retro radio enthusiasts who might be watching this video, I'm sorry if this annoyed you. I truly am. Finally in the teardown came all the nitty gritty stuff. This was like removing the speaker, breaking off bits of wood, and just general stripping it down to its spare parts. I wasn't able to film this as it was a real pain, and it was not very good, it was mostly my hand from what I did film. So now you just get to see the finished thing, or nearly finished thing. With all the destruction finally out of the way, let's move on to the construction of the PC. So now it's a few days later and all the parts have arrived. We've got it outside and I've teared it down a tiny bit more from what we last saw and cleaned up the Murphy logo. The first thing going into this PC will be the fans. If you take a look at the speaker holes, they're actually 80mm holes. This means I can fit three 80mm PC fans with little issue. So that's what I did. Three Noctura Redux fans. All with slightly modified edges as they don't fit that well if you don't modify them and a little tightening of screw, and it turned out perfectly, as you can see. I think this is much better than a big 140mm fan, and some no low noise adapters were added to make sure it was nice and quiet under load. Next up was the motherboard. I had to put in some holes for standoffs, and then I'll line up the motherboard so I could cut out the I.O. shield. To cut out space for the I.O., I planned on drilling holes all around the thing, but initially I used a circular drill bit to hollow out the middle so it would be less material. Unfortunately for me, this didn't really work, and I was left with three big gaping holes and no solution in sight. Thankfully, my dad came up to me and showed me a better way. He suggested that we drill holes in the corner of the IO shield and then use a little Stanley knife saw that would be much more effective than just trying to eyeball it with drills. So, that's what we did. Here, you can see him marking out the IO shield with a little box cutter, and then drilling in holes at the corner so that we can fit the big saw blade in to then cut it out. We used a regular saw as a straight edge, but unfortunately it wasn't actually straight as the top of the radio isn't straight, so I hope you can excuse a slightly squid edge. Multiply that same action again by four times for all four corners, and we now have an IO shield. Testing it with the final motherboard, it fit great like a glove. Some of the standoffs didn't quite line up, but I'm sure I'll fix that in the future. Definitely. The motherboard we'll be using in question is a Biostar Racing GTN X370. Why? Because it was one of the cheapest ITX AM4 boards on eBay at the time, costing me around £65 after shipping. It's an okay board, but 
the reason we have Nocturnal Low Noise Adapters is because it doesn't support 3-pin fans. For CPU, we'll be using a Ryzen 5 2400G that I got in a motherboard bundle for about 50 quid, as well as the cooler that came with it. Installation went ahead pretty easily, although it does kind of look like I have three hands in this clip, because a hand disappears from one end, disappears, then another one, and it's like, where are all the hands coming from? <laughs> Next up, we have the RAM. This is a mismatched kit of Corsair and a random stick that came with that CPU in the motherboard bundle. It costs around 40 quid, and I'll swap it out for some decent Corsair stuff sticks later down the line, but just to get it running for now, 16 gigs of 3000 megahertz RAM isn't bad, and we won't be using the onboard graphics, so it's fine enough. Last part of this bundle was a 15 pound, 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD, which is on the back of it. Installing the cooler and thermal paste, and we're ready to go. All the cost in total is around 160 pounds, so for the motherboard bundle, it's not that bad to be honest, and it saves a lot of money than buying new. Plopping the motherboard in, it sits okay on the standoffs, but I had to take a couple out and just put a regular screw to support it. It's held up by the Spitif audio at jack, but I don't think that'll be that big a deal. For the power supply, I've got an Aerocool Integrator 600 watt 80 plus bronze power supply. It's not the best, but it's nice and small for an ATX thing, and it has all the leads I need and the wattage I need. It was also free because I had it lying around, so that helps. Once again, we cut into the side with the Stanley knife and then sawed it up with the Stanley knife saw, times that by four, and then thing pops out nice and neatly. Here, dear viewers, I'm gonna need you to pretend I didn't make a mistake. Initially, when I was building the power supply, I used a bit of a wood shimmy, but it was really terrible and sucked. So, here is in the future, well past where we are just now, and me and my dad were building up with screws and metal plates. It was much stronger and much flusher. Here, you can see us attaching it to the power supply mounting things. Uh, two on the top and one on the bottom. And then we did an L bracket so that it was nice and tight as well. To get good enough leverage, we had to take out the acrylic front panel, I think it is, so that we could fit the other screw in. It was worth it as we managed to slide it back in afterwards and it didn't really affect anything other than just making the power supply much, much easier to mount in. And that's the power supply mounted. As you can see, the socket is nice and strong and sturdy against it. Next up, we move to the piece de resistance in my opinion. This switch, it's a dual acting momentary switch that I'm going to put into the where the radio slot is and then I'm going to glue the front knob of the classic thing. So it'll still look like the OG radio, but it'll have the full functionality of the PC power supply switch. The way we're going to do this is I trimmed down the switch and then took apart, sticking the front thing through and then putting the uh, washer on and then the main back section on like this. This meant that it was flush to the front and secure, able to turn, but it didn't have a lot of the weight being supported at the back. To fix the knob and the thing, I took a Dremel to them, cutting them down greatly, slightly damaging the knob, but all in all, it turned out a lot better than I initially hoped and thought it would. It was so usable after coating it with some super glue. Initially, I used this Bostix, but I had to use a two-part epoxy. I also used this two-part epoxy to attach the other knob to the front. This was a very hard lying epoxy and you can't even move the other knob and the knob that does change is very secure and not going to fall off anytime soon. Finally came up mounting the discrete GPU. For testing we used this old dead GPU. We placed it on a PCI Express riser that was rested on two bits of wood, like we'd mounted the power supply on before. And here, to much my dad's dismay, is him failing to saw the supporting thing in half. Next, we drilled some holes in MDF to attach it to the bottom of the radio. Using a low profile ratcheting screwdriver, we were able to screw it down in the tight area. We were very worried about this initially, but managed to sort out. Then we attached the PCI Express riser that I found in an old Coolmaster pace I had to the block of wood so that it would stay supported and lock in place. We then, to make sure it stayed squared, added an extra bit of wood that was attached with two screws to the two bits of wood that we'd screwed the whole down plate in. 
Afterwards, we marked the hole into the top of the case to add a screw to make sure that the, power, the graphics card was held up on both sides, as the only one screw was used to hold up the back bit of wood. So this front screw was used to hold up the front of the graphics card. To make sure the graphics card was well ventilated, I cut holes in the back of the thing and attached some old air filters. They were kind of dusty, but they did stay on using PVA glue and will provide much needed air for that graphics card. Lastly is RGB lighting. I wanted the radio selective thing to light up, so using a bit of a paper plate and an old MSI RGB strip I cut up, I attached it after calling it in black and taped in the RGB strip so that it shone down into the case. And as you'll see later, I think it turned out quite well. And with that, the case, I guess you could call it, is finished. All that's left to do is throw in all the components and then we can get that beautiful, beautiful glam shots. So there you have it, my 1930s radio receipt. I think it looks incredible. The wood compared to the fans. The only thing that I would change was next time would be route the IO to the back so it didn't have it sticking out on the side. But other than that, I think it looks incredible. I hope you guys agree the same. One last final touch for added was some cardboard cutouts to cover up the IO to make sure it just looked a bit less rough edges. But we might, I might replace that with some 3D printed brackets. The fate of this PC is one that I do not know. I can't afford to keep this lying around as the components, whilst they weren't too pricey for an ITX build, it's a lot more than I have just to keep it lying around in, IT in computer components. So I might sell it or I might just strip out the parts. Because of the performance, I think it could be sold for quite a lot these days. It has a GTX 1080 in it, so it's still no slouch when it comes to 1080p gaming, as shown by this Doom Eternal performance. It was ran at 1080p with Ultra Nightmare, and whilst not being the most quiet thing, down to those not to have fans running at full speed, it still wasn't annoying. It was fine enough sitting about a meter away from me at the desk, and I could sit and play Doom Eternal like this for hours. I forgot how much fun this game was. In terms of temperatures, it was actually really good, sitting around 50 degrees on the GPU and 40 degrees on the CPU when gaming which is quite good for a con converted PC build, I think. So I'd just like to thank everyone for watching. This is my first ever like custom case PC build and I think it turned out amazingly. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next